Hey, look, I'm gonna finally plant some flowers or something here in this front bed. We're also going to finish bricking around that, make the outside of our house look good. We have like so much stuff planted everywhere else. Front of the house, nothing. We'll get there. Here's a view of my garden you don't usually see. There's the bees. People drive by, slow down and rubberneck, and I'm like, can't blame them. It was about this time of year that we moved out here. Uh, we moved at the end of April. So this May and into June, spring and in summer, it's very reminiscent of our first year here. When we moved out here, we moved from in town and all of this was so foreign to me. Uh -huh. I knew it was about time, so I came down to check the fence lines. We used to have a bunch of wild blackberries on our property, but you know, now we have animals and we've pretty much fenced and are using our entire acreage. But we have multiple neighbors that have much larger pieces of property that still have a lot of blackberry brambles and they give me permission to come forage for berries. So here's one of the big brambles and it's largely green. Some of the ones in the ditches like I just showed you uh, are already black, but I don't, I don't really like to pick them out of this area. Sometimes you find interesting things on the roadside. Like check this out, that's echinacea, which is really cool. But if you're gonna forage, it's really better to do it up off the road, like those blackberries right by the road. Don't really wanna pick and eat those because there's no telling what's on them. The people who drive by think I'm nuts, but thankfully there's not very many of them. When I first really began to learn about food and the importance of growing it and sourcing it locally and just the atrocities of our modern agricultural ways, I was just completely engrossed with this idea like I was desperate for food sustainability. but. At the time, really whenever I really, I had kind of been learning about it and moving towards like clean eating and eating whole foods and like sourcing better. But when I got the bug to have my own farm, I was a divorced single mom. My older two boys now are 13 and 15 and they were little guys at the time and I just so desperately wanted a farm. and. It was nowhere in the realm of possibility for me at the time. However, um, my pastor had 40 acres and it was covered in wild blackberries. And he would let me go pick wild blackberries. And I would go, and I'm serious when I tell you, like the entirety of that desire for food sustainability, I would pour it into picking those wild blackberries. I would pick wild blackberries for hours and pick gallons. I picked wild blackberries with a baby asleep in a carrier. I picked wild blackberries every chance that I could. That's when I learned to can and make jam. Now, obviously, I don't really need to pick wild blackberries. I we're, We planted berry bushes and I buy some locally grown berries to make jam out of. But every year, no matter what, um, I come out down these roadsides, even though we grow hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds of food every year or maybe we will be into the thousands this year um i still come down these roadsides and pick the wild blackberries and so i just wanted to come check and see if they were ready when we moved onto our property you can imagine 
I was beside myself, completely silly, excited. I just, the <laughs> possibility of having four acres at the time, whenever I was coming from the place of ferociously picking wild blackberries with this big, massive, impossible dream. Uh, when we moved here, I was like raring to go. But uh, Sweet Maya, he's he's an anchor to my wings <laughs> in all the best ways, you know, sometimes the most frustrating ways. But uh, I'm sure that me trying to take off in flight all the time is, is frustrating for him. But we're together for a reason. And he, uh, he slowed me down with all of his practicality. And uh, that first few months of living in our property, we had no fences, no barns, no outbuildings, no infrastructure. And we just had to make our property livable. And so for another spring, I picked the blackberries all up and down this roadside onto our neighbor's property and all down his fence line. And at that time, we still had a lot of blackberries on our property, picked all of them. And uh, I remember we ate so many blackberries that spring, <laughs> even more so than in years past, because they were here, they were right around my house. I didn't have to drive somewhere. So, so like I'd wake up really early in the morning while the kids were still in bed and leave them here with mine. And I'd come out and I'd pick the berries. And I picked gallons and gallons and gallons of wild blackberries. We had them in the freezer for a very long time. We had cobblers and jam and muffins and oh my goodness, so many things. We still have a little bit of blackberry bramble up here along this ditch in the front of our property. I know that I am a hopeless romantic about everything. Um, it, I, I choose that. I choose to be that way. I would so much rather uh, live a life with rose-colored glasses, but I think that there really is like an intentional choice to like, you know, I, I call it building altars, but like putting places in your life where you go back to. And picking wild blackberries for me is kind of like that. It's kind of going back to the decision to be tenacious about a dream and do the very most with what you have. It's about patience uh, to build whenever it feels so stinking close that you can taste it. And there's just something really wonderful about the fact that like when you really 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 have a desire if you look there's usually something that you can do to lay hold of that you, it's never it's never everything they're hoping for it's never the fullness but usually if there's a real desire in your heart if you look around close enough you'll be able to find some way to like express that and that's what wild blackberries are for me they're a little late this year usually they're starting to ripen by the end of May or the beginning of June. Um, usually by Father's Day, they're like in full swing. So maybe they'll still, they'll still do that. I'll keep an eye on it. I walk down here every handful of days this time of year to check on the blackberries. And it always makes this view all that much sweeter coming back down. Actually, I've been wanting to look at this. So this is in with my boy goats right on the other side of the garden. I noticed this though, I thought that was so funny. There is a squash plant right here. I have no idea what kind. I'm assuming that this is growing from seeds that maybe the pigs ate. I don't know, it's not set any fruit yet, so I can't really see the shape of them. Looks like those are all male flowers, so. We'll see. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm incredibly shocked that the boy goats have not eaten that. I would have thought that they would have, but they haven't. For some reason, volunteer plants just, I always call them free food or free plants, and they really excite me. I mean, I can have like all of this growing, and I'm like looking at the single squash plant that's growing. I've got like 20 squash plants in the back, but that one growing in the woods, I'm like, you go, guy. You can do it. Make me some squash that I didn't have to plant. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey! Hey 
Hey boys. Hey handsomest boys. There's a different view of that. <sighs> it smells like cedar and life in here. I've kind of been having to keep an eye on these things to get an idea of how much they need watered. And like these guys are starting to look a little droopy so I'm going to water them tomorrow um, in the morning and water them really good and deeply like for a good long time. I'm really having to adjust to this. Uh, it's just different and we are getting the irrigation set up which will make it a lot easier to water. Um, right now still hose watering. We did hook up those drip lines for the peppers yesterday. But um, yeah, it's just an adjustment. It's, it's just a mental adjustment for it to rain 10 inches in a week and then to be like, oh yeah, I gotta water those plants. Because uh, I just forget, because I'm just not, not used to that. But I, I think right now the tomatoes are needing to be watered well about every three or four days, probably every four days. But with all the rain we've been having, it's really overcast. And so it's not getting very hot in here. If it was really sunny, it would probably need to be watered more than that. These plants do look really amazing though. Nice dark green, healthy leaves. Um, no, we're not gonna eat the leaves. I was just looking at them. I pruned out here very extensively the other day. It took me a while. It took me a couple hours to prune everything, take all the suckers off. I mean, I wasn't like rushing or anything. I was taking my time. How do you know about gardening like that? You know, you know, I know a lot about gardening. Yeah. I'm glad you think so. Look at this garden. Ben, let's see if we can count how many spaghetti squash are starting here. One. One. Two. Two. Ooh. Three. That one it's done. No, it's not done yet. It's got to change color. So it's getting big though. What did spaghetti squash make? Spaghetti squash is a winter squash. There's some more over here. Huh? Look here. Huh? There's. Three, four. Three, I think you four, lost. I think you lost count, bro. Four. There's a lot. Do you want to just settle for that? Mm -hmm. Oh, here's some more babies over here. Yeah. Five, six, seven. The summer squash has started really, really cranking them out. Uh, this morning I came out here and there were two that were massive. I didn't harvest them yesterday. I didn't look at them because it rained all day. Look how healthy they are. In the house. They're so. They're looking really good. These are curtnecks. There's a baby. I came out this morning and there were these two massive squash. Like zucchinis have the ability to just get to be the size of like a baby within no time. Uh, you got to stay on top harvesting them. And yesterday it was raining all day, so I didn't. Today, whenever I found those, I was like, oh, okay. So it's like a milestone. I'm like, okay, that's what season of gardening we're in. The baby says zucchini. Uh, season of gardening. We're there. Time to be alert. <laughs> On guard. It's baby. It's baby size zucchini done. Okay, so my potatoes are many and I just wanted to cheat. So I just wanted to peek in here. Underground things are very hard for me. So if there's like cheating and allowed, like if you can do that, you know, some things you can't. Like with carrots and root vegetables, you can sometimes kind of like peek on the top and see how big they are, but mostly you have to pull them up to really know. But I thought with the potatoes, maybe since I have so many, I could just kind of like brush the soil aside in one little area and just see what's going on down there. Come here, Ben. Do you want to see? Yeah. <laughs> okay, here. Look, look what I see. Can you hold the camera? Sure. You see that right there? That is a little tiny potato baby. And there's another. These are the I think Adirondack blue, and like a really dark bluish purple. And those are potato babies. Let's put it back on so they can develop. Until they get bigger, and we look in there again and see if they get bigger and bigger and bigger. If they get those potato babies get bigger, we can check under there. Yeah, and then when they get big enough, we'll cook them and eat them. From the garden. <laughs> From the garden. <laughs> Did you know that sweet potatoes are a relative of morning glories and you can kind of see that 
and the growth patterns of their foliage. It's very similar to morning glories. You dancing? Okay, I'm gonna bump my mic up so you guys can hear this. The chorus of wild things took me, that was one of the things that I had to really get used to in moving out here uh, after living in town, is how all the sounds from being in town, like people and cars and doors slamming and music and all of that, like those are absent. And it's a weird absence if you've only ever heard that. But it is never quiet. And that was like an adjustment. And I remember I used to sit on our back porch and just listen to this and be like, oh, I think that's why I still like to do my evening walks. Whenever the spring comes and the the chorus comes back, it always is like, gets me in the feels. Hey, little sunflowers are getting ready to open up. Now these are, pro these are planted kind of close together, as you can see. These are cutting sunflowers, so they're not meant to grow like super, super tall. Uh, you plant these like six, four to six inches apart. And as you can see here, like this one's gonna open up and it's not gonna be massive, but it's just the right size to cut and put in a big mason jar on the table. These are pro-cut sunflowers, which they're actually designed for cutting. They're for growers that grow cutting flowers. But with sunflowers, like other sunflowers, if you plant them really close together, they're gonna grow smaller. If you plant them, like my ones that I grow really big, in my garden, I think they were like 15 feet tall, is I put one sunflower in the corner of the bed with nothing really closely next to it that it has to fight with, especially nothing that it has to fight for light with. I grow some lower growing things. And I also grow it right on the edge next to one of the arches. Um, and I just take twine or something and kind of tie it, not to the arch where it's actually touching it, but give it a little bit of support with the arch. But these, I wasn't trying to get these super tall. They'll get taller than that, um, but I don't expect, I mean, they're not gonna be like 10 feet tall or anything like that. So far, I'm pretty happy with those. I think that they're really good. I'm actually pretty happy with this garden uh, that I just put in the ground. This garden really didn't cost very much. Of course, I had borrowed a tiller, so that was a resource that I had to have. Ben Turn brought his tiller over. And then we put some compost down but if you lived in a place that didn't have horrible soil, you wouldn't have to do that. And then we put the straw on top of it. But no real structure to this. Uh, there wasn't any cost in like building beds or anything. I haven't even finished planting it. I feel like actual gardening season is kind of just like, oh, hey, <laughs> there you are. I don't know how I'm not ready for you. It's almost June, <laughs> but <laughs> for some reason, here I am caught a little off guard by it. <laughs> hey bro, let's go inside. Because it's almost dark. It's not almost dark. He's like, it's not dark yet though. My kids will just stay outside. Sky. There's still sky, I know. Come on, let's go inside. Thank you guys for hanging out with me this evening on my evening walk, checking on the blackberries. I bless y'all, until next time. You know you can't take that chain in the house, right? Come on, let's go take a bath. I race you. Go. 